going to be having a very special wake and bake moment with Captain Hooter right there in your homes. Yeah, man. Take care, Captain Hooter, and give it to the world as best as you can. It's Captain Hooter. <laughs> What's happening, everybody? Hooter here. Getting my chill on. Ooh. I don't know about you guys, but I am chilling like a villain here. Oof, I decided to pick out one of my favorite little spots here to, if I'm gonna chill, I might as well chill with all my little woodland creature friends. How cool is this? Wow. Anyway, welcome back. We are, uh, we're here for season two of Wake and Bake with Captain Hooter. I wanted to start off this season and this year on a positive note and so I brought back one of my favorite guests from last year and that is the Mommy Jane. So sit back, grab a big warm blanket, a hot cup of coffee, spark one up. I'm going to sit here and hang out with my friend Mr. Owl and uh, Mr. Bunny over there and I... Uh, <laughs> And I'll see you guys in a few minutes. Hello, hello everyone. Captain Hooter here, back, alive, survived 2023. And I couldn't decide who I wanted to do the first show of the year with. And then I saw this. I'm hoping you can see this. If you can't see this, what it says is, let's just smoke weed, drink some tea, and talk about happy things. And I am thrilled to have back with us again, the Mommy Jane. How are you? Hi! I've got I didn't my bring tea. My... <laughs> you got your tea. I've got my water, but I definitely brought my cannabis. <laughs> Good girl. Got plenty of that also. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing so well. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year to everybody. Yes. Oh, it, it is it's going to be a great year. I knew it was going to be a great year. And you know, at the same time, I was looking for a beacon, a light. And I started just, you know, tapping into all my friends and then boom, there you were. And I went, ah, there she is. And she's got the perfect tweet. That was, that was so beautifully done. Just smoke some weed, drink some tea and talk about happy things. Isn't that, I mean, okay, I'm here. It's the doing? goals. It's the goals for this year. I think we were we were still kind of coming out of a fog, so to speak, from 2022. And I feel like this year we finally have our footing. We've been dealing with a lot of depressing news. So why not create this microscopic eco space that we can control in our area and and make something good happen sometimes? Why not have a day of good when there's so much dark? Why not Absolutely. have a day of light? Absolutely. You know, and as soon as you threw that out there, one of the first things I did is I popped over to your profile to refresh myself on all of the things that you are doing. And one of the things that I saw was something new that you're, you're working on, which is fan bases. Ah, yes, the fan bases. <laughs> you tell, me, tell me about fan bases. What is that? That's kind of cool. Fan bases approached me a couple of months ago, and they are very similar to um cameo it's a way for people to connect with their you know favorite influencers or uh you know some athletes some celebrities do it it just depends on you know where your kind of your niche is in this grand scheme of things but i was their first cannabis content creator that they brought on to uh to their platform so i'm very honored this is a way for people to um you know ask me a question if they want to have a one-on-one -on -one time some consulting so it's really great because it's a chance for us to connect one-on-one because -on -one, sometimes I can't get to Atlanta, Georgia, but I still want to be able to connect with somebody who lives there or like how we're doing right now, all the way from Amsterdam, I think, right? Are you in Amsterdam? So where are you currently? Right. Okay, yeah. yeah. So from Amsterdam to California, why not? So this will be a great opportunity for us to connect more 
in the new year and for people to get to know me a little bit more privately and also to get to know themselves a little bit more along the way. Absolutely. I, I was, I, I just, I loved the platform. It was very interesting and it zipped me around to uh, all the other things that you're kind of working on. And uh, in the process of uh, zipping around there, I also found a social media uh, program, educational program that you're, you're yes. doing now. Dude. Okay. So I, I think we talked about this even last time as being something yes. that was like perfect for you. Okay. Can tell me a it's little bit more about what this is? Well, the great thing is about this coming through the new year is we actually reconnected all of us at Tokativity and myself. Um, we re reconnected and decided, okay, so we did the first round. It launched in April of last year. It was great. We've had such positive feedback. Those that have bought it have given tr such tremendous positive feedback. There hasn't been anything really negative so far, except for the length of it. And so we were like, okay, do we break this down? Do we make this into chunks? So what we did was we made options. We make an option for just video now, just te like text. Like if you want to just go through it like a workbook or you can buy the whole package and get both. So different price points now and different lengths and different like investments, I guess, as far as like time and money, you know? So we really want this to be beneficial and tangible for people in the new year. And that was the best way that we could come up with something to make it feasible for, for more people. This is also going to be released on, um, I, I'm, I'm so bad with names. Excuse my ADHD. I think it's called gum drop or something like that. Gum, okay. gum, Sounds gum good. shoe, something with gum in it, but it's a different platform. You're just going to go like a, it'll be like a PDF practically. And, um, yeah, we, I actually got my first testimonial. I don't, I've never asked for testimonials, but someone got into my DMS and they were saying that. They're getting paid, their page is doing well, and they're making money. So, hey, everyone wins in that situation. That's that's the whole point is for everybody to make money. This is a very uh, lucrative industry. And if we don't keep that cash flowing, where is it going to go? If we are going to behave like other industries, we already see how that happens. And things tend to topple over if we keep building in one sector and not other. So keep the money going, keep the money flowing. Marketing is very important. We need to take marketing very seriously when it comes to changing minds, changing hearts, and exposing people to new products. You know, years ago, I didn't even know what CBN was. Years ago, I didn't even think psychedelics would be a possibility for our future. So it's amazing what marketing, good marketing, can potentially do for our industry and other, uh, you know, wellness industries. Right. Well, and you know the, how I feel about this and, and, and you know, how, how well you do it uh, I think that there are some people that can do this and can do it extremely well. And there's other people that, that have to, you know, pick and choose their shots. Um, I'm, I'm a more of a pick and choose your shots, how I go about doing it. But when I do do it, I do it with, with gusto. I love, you know, when I find a new product and I, I finally decide I'm going to say something about it, then, you know, I go all the way, you know, to the moon with it. And, I love testing. I'm starting to get a lot of new products now, which is cool. Uh, a lot of new things are coming my way that I get to play with. And it's, uh, you know, they're saying, hey, check this out. Have you seen this before? And it's like, all right, you know. Uh, can I counter with a question for you? Yes. What, what do you think are going to be really big trends in this industry for 2023? Mm. What are your predictions? Just based on what you're kind of getting in the mail right now, what are you playing with? You know, what, what do you think are going to be like, Okay. The future of cannabis. Yeah. Oh God. There's a lot that goes with that. I mean, I, I'm a pipe guy, so I've always been, you know, interested in that market. And uh, the, at my my flavor of the moment are uh, freeze pipes. Have you seen freeze pipes? So Whoa! This, this is a freeze pipe. That is a glycerin center has a nice little removable bowl. Oh, gotta love the removable bowl for easy okay. cleaning. So oh, this, yeah. This, you take this, throw it in the freezer. Okay. The whole Come thing? Back. The whole thing. In the freeze. Pull it out in 30, 20, 15. It gets cold pretty quick. Throw the bowl in. Oh my God. And you have one of the that smoothest decadent. Ones ever. I have another one that has a bubbler. Um, and I, I started with the bubbler and it's been uh, probably five or six months I've been using that one. And that's, that's been a very nice one, but it's a larger, this I just received for Christmas and I've been, and I'm, 
Mm. Whoever got that for you really yeah. knows you. Yeah, it, it was a winner. <laughs> uh, the, the other small pipe that I've been enjoying a lot lately is this one. It's called a Herb Shuttle. Looks like this. It looks like a vial from like the looks, 1800s. Right. Okay. So that's that. Yeah. And that's glass. It's growing, Captain. <laughs> so the way you do this is you would have a one of these filled up ahead of time. Take off the end. Things you shoot up in a tube, like in sci-fi. Stick that in there. Wow. Press it. Turn it counterclockwise. Oh my God. Remove the top. And now you've got this little pipe. See? Look at that. It's perfect for parents on the go. Throw and that not, in your baby now, diaper holder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a perfect little like sneak a toke hitter, right? It was the perfect sneak a toke. And then you could put the little thing right back on top of it when you're done. And then you know, blow it into your little smoke buddy or whatever it is that you've got and your stealth, wherever you happen to be. Oh, I love these. That's just, mm, I can, I can. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. The pipe on the go. Perfect. Pipe on the go. But I have to tell you the biggest present that I actually bought myself for Christmas. And the, the if I was going to go out and start promoting something and something that I'm, I was, I'm thrilled with, it's this big boy. That is a big boy. You know what that is? That's is that that's one of those a, infusion things. That is an ardent flex, and this is it's two hundred and twenty volt, specially made for Europe, right? So this is oh, yeah, the right? plugs, you have to have the plugs, right? yeah, yeah. Plug. So they make the one for Europe for this. So this thing by okay. itself is the simplest, dumbest thing, and I'm I was I was. It started by being, I was so happy with it. And then after I used it twice, I was pissed. And I said, you know, this is pissing me off because I could have had this for years and been using this. Because this thing is just, it's so convenient. It's one button, you push the single button, you stick the bud in the, you know, it's got the little tube in it. You stick the bud in the tube, close it, come back in an hour and a half. It's done. That's decarbed. Put it in the thing, stick whatever you're going to put in it. You're going to put, uh, <sighs> Uh, butter are you going to do oil you're going to do whatever you're going to infuse it into put that in there cover it up again push another button see another hour and a half uh then if you want to make up uh, bread or cookies or whatever you want you make the dough and everything stick that right in this exact same hole so it's all this unbelievable one, all one shot right here thing right um really happy with this device and the quality of the products that i've had since i've got it so far i've just been Butternut bread was right on the number. I've infused oh my gosh. Flour. I'm making some infused salt, some infused sugar. I've got four racks of butter over Wait, there. Wait, you can already. even do the sugars on there too? You can do sugar. You can do sugar. You can make infused sugar and salt. You can do, it's surprising all the different things you can do. And, and I'll tell you something else that I didn't, uh, maybe I knew it, but for whatever reason, I kind of forgot it. I didn't realize that smoking decarbed weed will get you a little higher than smoking normal weed. Um, I, CBN in there. Well, yeah, you activate a lot more shit, yeah. <laughs> right? And then- You're gonna um, sleep pretty good too, Captain. <laughs> yeah, there, it, there's not a lot of, uh, not a lot of flavor uh, per se. Uh, you've lost all your flavor and, you know, your turps are gone, but hey, the, the, the buzz was, you know, pretty phenomenal. And I, all right, well, you know, we're just, let's just keep experimenting with the- uh, Sustainability. <laughs> exactly so what did you see what did you get during uh christmas did you get any good toys or any good uh uh things that you're going to be sharing to the world well i was trying to cut back on combusting this year but i got a lot of bongs i was actually surprised really i i, I kept saying you know i got my first ceramic bong i've never had a ceramic bong they're very heavy yeah very heavy. I'm very excited. I haven't even used that one yet because I'm like trying to find the perfect occasion, the special occasion for that. Mm -hmm. Plus, bongs hit differently. Like, I can't just, I know everybody's different. I am now 38 years old. My tolerance, I will not get shit done if I am smoking bong loads all day. That's just who I am. It's just yeah. me. I know there's plenty of you that I can. More power to you. But yes, I'm reserving for that right moment. 
And then I got a gorgeous like gift set uh, from my bud base. I was very, very excited for that because um, it comes with like a big rolling tray and um, a, a stash jar. And it's just a good party piece. Like we're starting to have people over again, you know? And a lot of my friends are cannabis consumers. We're not, we don't have a lot of alcohol drinking friends and it's fine if they are. I mean, I'll get stuff for them too. But like for the most part, I just hit up the dispensary. We get our goodies, you throw it on a tray. You're good to go. You got the games going and it's just, it's a good, fun, easy night. So I'm very excited to like utilize the party aspect again, the recreational stuff. I haven't, I haven't had a chance to really get recreational with cannabis, you know, it take, you can by yourself, but it's not the same. It's not the same. Right. When you can party with friends, it's a whole different feel. I feel like even if I smoke the same strain at home versus with people, it is absolutely different. It is right. absolutely different. So yeah. I'm excited to, to party more. I'm excited to dive into learning more products, like how you're looking at, like a lot of people now are in the DMs asking me for uh, discreet products because they're still in the cannabis closet. A lot of my community is still in the cannabis closet. So yes, I love the bongs and the bongs are great and they're beautiful, but what about the parents that can't just display yeah. their art all around? So my goal, my focus this year is to like, I'm so excited for this podcast to come out because I can't wait to share what you've been sharing just now with these products are yeah. very family friendly. They're very parent friendly. So um, nice and discreet, uh, you know, sustainable because it's like you're utilizing all, all the plant matter. Parents can't but blow their entire budget on buds. No. Days. The, the recession is taking over. It's even tapping into my, my well, budget. Oh, but now wait a second. Now you're, it, it's, it's, it's kind of, it, this is going to blow your mind a little bit. Now what? I'm here in the Netherlands. And you are in my ex-hometown in Orange County, California. When I left Orange County about 10 years ago, uh, a pound or an ounce, let's say an ounce, of the very best bud in the world that you could get a hold of would cost you about 300 maybe $350 an ounce. And it would be mind-blowing, incredibly great uh, weed. My friend Darren, who I've known since childhood, uh, I talked to last week. He's getting that weed right now at $100 an ounce. That was the same, the most premium, premium, stupendous, fantastic, but, you know, uh, black market, of course. Yeah. Okay. Spectacular buds for $100 an ounce. Now. But that's the black market. Now yeah. we have the freaking hands of the man on it. We have right? taxes on top of taxes on top of taxes. I got an email this week. And I was like, it was from a local delivery service. I'm not naming any names. I'm not blaming them. It's not them that are making the rules, but they're saying, just want to let you know, prices are increasing as of the new year because California agreed to this, yada, yada. It's like, when is it ever going to freaking stop, man? The gray market's not going to go anywhere. If we continue to keep it, oh, 30% taxes. Yeah. I go to a liquor store. I, I can get a freaking like, you know, I don't know how much alcohol goes for these days for like, but like a t bottle of a huge bottle of alcohol for like 20 bucks. Like, a, I don't know how, whatever the liters are of it. So like a liter of alcohol, like hard alcohol for like 20 bucks. You can't get hardly any cannabis for that these days. A joint's going to cost me a tw 20 bucks once taxes yeah. are done. A joint. Yeah. That's insane. It, it, what's insane is here, all the way over here in the Netherlands, we're seeing the very interesting side effects of what's going on in California and in New York and in Canada. Uh, most of the high-end premium buds that you will find in a lot of coffee shops here in the Netherlands right now is probably from Canada, has been recently. Um, and, and it's been very good, high-end, reasonable, cost-efficient, great, great buds. Um, there's California buds, obviously are still considered to be the premium, premium, premium. Cali buds uh, that are actual, allegedly uh, uh, Cali buds are selling for 30 euros a gram. 30 euros a gram. Uh, not all of those are actual Cali buds. A lot of those are Cali buds that are grown here and in some cases are just grown at a higher level and because it's, it's passable. None of the buds here are tested. 
nothing is so a lot of the things that are come here come maybe after they didn't pass a test from somewhere else uh, if you've been following a lot of the photos and things that i've been displaying for the last year uh, especially the last six months of the last couple of cannabis cups here you will see an awful lot of amber trichomes here which tell you that a lot of this stuff is old it's been coming from uh, I waited too long of, yeah waited too long okay uh, but but the quality is there you can see uh, robust uh, uh, plentiful trichomes everywhere they're just all you know extremely dark overripe now there is some great premium good dutch bud here and uh, homegrown, or not homegrown, but uh, uh, reasonably priced. It's just, there's the risk factor here for these people. They can still get arrested. You know, it's so bass backwards here, you know? It is. Now, now, if you remember last year when we had this conversation, I was still in Portugal. And I was making those runs back and forth over to Spain. Oh, mwah. dude. Spain. The is Portugal's the, where it's at. <laughs> no, well, Portugal's good, but they don't they don't have great bud at all. They they had they're hey. they're just close to Spain. Spain okay. was the action, and uh, Barcelona, obviously, a tons of place well known. Are you coming to Spanibus this year? By the way, I never can. I mean, March. Good. Biggest event in Europe. Biggest event in Europe. You might want to make that move. Think about it. Uh, so that that's March. Um, by the way, I'm going to be covering it for Fat Nugs Magazine there in the United States. I am thrilled. Last time I covered it for uh, uh, Cannabis Culture, and uh, I'm going to cover Spanibus this year for uh, Fat Nugs Magazine. So that was one of my... Congratulations. Uh, That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I That's love perfect. Having, yeah. I wanted to... And they, are, they remind me a lot of... I don't want to say the High Times vibe and everything, but they do have a really groovy kind of like old school oh yeah you the whole thing from the the top down and uh uh i did an interview with dustin their uh their editor at large uh here on my show last year and and just love the guy it's uh, uh he's gonna be a score but anyway you should definitely make a run to uh to spanish okay. i think you would you would uh truly enjoy that but the, the spanish bud and especially down south in the uh andalusia uh, uh -huh. area uh, I think I mentioned some of the best buds that I've seen since, I mean, you're talking about, you know, the emerald, uh, we're talking about Cali buds. I mean, some of the very best buds. So nice. And it's such and a- Captain, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's such a, just, a, it's a very different business, you know, completely. Um, here in Amsterdam, it's, it's a tourist market, you know? I mean, you have uh, millions and millions and millions and millions of people come here and they are just- they're here for a day. They're here for two days, maybe. Um, it's wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. And 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 uh, you know the I I don't know if I showed you, uh, but I when we were we we spoke last time, I was talking about the the little package that I was was kind of designing, which was a, called a perfect day, and the whole idea was I I wanted to get yes. five. You know, here they sell one gram at a time. Um, you can buy five grams is the maximum amount you can buy. So you could really get five one gram pure pre-rolls. And if you were going to do it my way, you would start off with a killer sativa, you know, almost pure sativa, then do a sativa dominant, then do a hybrid, then do an indica dominant, and then finish off with the killer indica, right? And um, so I, when I came back to Amsterdam, I designed it, put it all together, and Oh when my I god. Went last week to pre de me. Congratulations. There she is. That oh is my god. The perfect oh day. No, I love it. You got the name and everything. Yeah. You rock. And I cannot wait to share this episode. This is so perfect. Please yeah. bring this to California. Yeah, yeah, see. So then you get the little oh card god. inside. And then on the Adorable. back is the QR code. And then you scan the QR code and it takes you to the website. And there's all kinds of different schedules and agendas and uh, top 20 lists and all kinds of stuff, but whole day ideas on how to spend and how to do. You could do this with every program. city. You could. 
I'm working on somebody with one in Jamaica. That was where the idea San I started San Francisco, with. do San Francisco. <laughs> Would love to do San Francisco. Perfect day in San Francisco. You could do it everywhere. You could do it everywhere. But the whole idea is like, like this one, I, I'm just, this is the first one because I'm kind of experimenting with it. Like I wrote one whole perfect day schedule with Hunter Thompson, like a Hunter Thompson attitude with it. And I did another one, which was, you know, I just want to eat, drink and smoke all day. Great. Okay. Let's go do that. Okay. Here's, <laughs> I want to just go shopping all day. Okay. So, yes. Yeah. So I'm trying to cover all the bases. Uh, for this is awesome. <laughs> cool. So yeah, so that was my that was my my main uh, uh, Christmas present that I ended up with, and I didn't even know they they had it done. I just like walked in and like ta da, there it was. I was like, oh my god. And for here, I mean, pre to me, that's the biggest, the the by far the biggest uh, coffee shop here in the Netherlands, and they're right close to right where the the train station and the boat docks are and everything is. So it's one of the the, the one the earliest coffee shops they open first thing in the morning which of course is perfect for me with the wake and bake and you know, exactly they, exactly yeah, yes it was, oh it was it was it's just heavenly that they were the ones who decided to do it so uh i'm very excited uh about that aspect of it and i'm gonna start creating some more uh cool agendas to play with yeah that is so on brand with you captain hooter it's it's so exciting. I want to go out there just so I can try those. Oh my gosh, well, what, a, what a concept. That's the next question. When are you coming here? So that you need to start thinking about this, right? Because I mean- Europe's expensive, man. No, 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 no. Especially the ones, if you're talking about coming to Amsterdam, the three big events that you want to come to is you need to come to Amsterdam first, then get on the train and go to Spanibus. Uh, Spanibus is not that expensive if you don't stay right in the middle of everything if you just stay off the the, the way off the grid uh, yeah a little bit yeah you're fine um and then the other one the other event is uh the one that's in um uh berlin uh which is also uh, going to be much more interesting this year because uh you know they're talking about trying to legalize in uh, in germany this year that's big no it's very big i think the mommy jane could be huge here all right, I will put I will put it out there to the universe. <laughs> Excellent. I'm I'm ready for Europe. <laughs> you know, one of the other things I wanted to talk to you about, which I thought was very important, that you posted uh, in the last couple of weeks, had to do with the uh, PayPal scam uh, scam that you went through. And oh, what a nightmare! I, I'm yeah. still dealing with that. <sighs> and I and I'm sorry to bring it up again. And the only reason why I'm going to is because um, I thought it was important you went through a couple of things there that um, I think any intelligent person would have uh, also went down that same path and it would be very easy to get lost like you were lost. And the thing that was surprising to me uh, mostly had to do with <laughs> Google. And yes, thank the, you. Yeah, okay. Um, so can you, without getting, and I don't want to get you all upset yeah. about it. No, 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 it'll be fast. Because I think it's something that we can all learn from. I had my uh, credit card electronically, not my credit card, my debit card electronically stolen at a gas station locally. It was happening everywhere rampantly. And I canceled my card as one does when they start to get those charges accruing. Um, and I went back a couple weeks later because I was it was my PayPal card. So I was thinking, eh, I don't use it that much. I forgot I even paused it, but a brand was going to pay me only via PayPal. So I'm like, oh, shoot, I got to reactivate that thing. So I did what the next person does. And I went to Google and I went to PayPal contact, contact PayPal, went to the first website that popped up, looked like PayPal, thought it was PayPal, had the blue button, like call, contact us, all that stuff, had the logo and everything. And in my mind, I'm thinking I hadn't, I mean, looking back, I had no idea that you, uh, that one, a company can pay to be at the top of Google. And I feel like Google has a responsibility, especially when it comes to brands that are that big, as far as like PayPal is concerned, you can't have people impersonating like that. Like there's gotta be a line. There's gotta be a line drawn 
because this is unbelievable that I was able to call them. They had the dial tone, like this call may be monitored and recorded for purposes, yada, yada. And when he wanted to get into my bank account, that's when I started to see the red flags. And it's very scary how quickly they can make you stop believing yourself like you're crazy. They're like, ma'am, why would I ask for your, your bank information? I'm trying to open up your PayPal for you. So then I started questioning myself. Plus I'm a little neurodivergent. And so I'm a little gullible. And so when people tell me things, I believe them. I believe them. And I start to question my own reality. And, you know, I'm trying not to be codependent. So I'm trying to do these things myself without having like another adult there to hold my hand along the way. But it got to the point where I was very uncomfortable. Uh, they wanted like access to my Zelle and all this information. And I went over to my husband because I, I, I shared my screen with them. I didn't realize that. I, I mean, I thought, I just, I just thought that that was normal too. I just thought that that was normal. Cause like, yeah, you got to get into my screen. You got to see what's going on. Why I can't log into PayPal. I don't know. So it was just such a nightmare situation. We, I finally had my husband Google, uh, cause they could see my screen and I didn't want them to see that I was Googling like what I was Googling. And so I just wanted to keep them on the line. I had him Google if PayPal was doing a scam with Scandesk, which is the app that they were, I was using to share my screen with, which I know is a foolish thing to do. I will never, ever do anything like that again, but I thought it was PayPal's help desk. I just trusted a really big brand or what I thought was a really big company at that time. Um, luckily, they we canceled transactions before the money was sent over, but they had access to everything. My Venmo, my Chase account, my PayPal account, my emails, my text messages. I mean, literally they, during that whole hour, they have access to fucking everything. And so afterwards I was so traumatized. I felt just so invaded and so scared, but I realized like so many content creators use PayPal. So many people in our industry still use PayPal. So that's why I created that thing, even though it was like shameful for me and embarrassing for me to say, Hey, I was bamboozled. I totally believe this. Don't do what I did sort of, sort of aspect, but like Seriously, they're getting so smart, you guys. We have to be so mindful. And I know I'm a global person, but I feel like I couldn't, there's other people out there that are, could definitely be taken aback by these people as yeah. well. Yeah, absolutely. And you know- So watch uh, out. Share disk is something that is a tool that is used a lot, especially for people that are doing a lot of computer repair work. Um, and uh, uh, that- It was highly helped. rated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I believed it. I well, was 4.6 and- stars. And so I'm like, oh, this is a real app. Okay, okay, I'll use this. Yeah, and at the top of the Google um, search, again, it seems like scam organizations shouldn't be allowed to buy or be in the top position uh, there. Uh, did, did you file any other complaints, by the way, with Google? No, I didn't call. The, everyone's like, you should call the police. You need to. It's like, man, I'm a drop in a bucket, to be yeah. honest. Like, this is, they probably deal with this. I mean, my, my husband and I both got scammed the same day. They both, they, they scammed our information, our credit cards. I think that's how we knew it was um, from a gas station. Cause I asked him, I'm like, have you, did you get gas at blah, blah, blah. He's like, yeah. I'm like, I think that's where they read our things. Cause the same day they just started using everyone's cards electronically, virtually. I mean, I was getting from, from boutiques in like other countries, like really weird charges. And so yeah. is he. So yeah. everyone just be really careful. They can, they can steal your card electronically now, not even tangibly. Like, you know, back in the day, you'd leave a credit card somewhere or someone would physically steal one. That's one thing. But when you don't know your information has been scanned yeah. and it can be used at any time is horrifying. Completely horrifying. Oh, so just be aware. Learn from my mistakes, man. I, yeah. I, geez, I'm so glad you brought that up because it was a really embarrassing moment, but it's such an important thing to know about moving forward. I think that you was know, it. Yeah. Huge. And, I, you know, I, I saw it just before the Christmas uh, shopping period was going along here and I was running around. I was going, you know, very conscientious about uh, all of that. And uh, thank you, because I thought that was, again, very brave of you. Um, uh, to come up. But that's that's your whole MO uh, is uh, uh, jumping out here. And, and you know, again, I, I'm thrilled that I was able to have you come on to be on the first show because you are, to me, a motivator. You truly are, I think, one of the, the sources that I go to now for a lot of the, when I'm looking for credible information coming from someone, I really appreciate it when it comes from you. I like your Mythbuster uh, series that you've been doing. That's bitching. I'm, I'm, I'm a little, uh, what was the one you did with, um, 
had to do with uh, sativa. It was either sativas uh, being the creative, but or cannabis being a uh, creative, uh, effective. Yes, creative. The, they said that cannabis makes you more creative. Okay. I feel like it makes me more creative. Okay, so I actually search out buds, and and that's a rating uh guide for me like i will look for something and and mostly those will be narrow leaf uh buds but i i am i i look for buds that will have or will trigger uh, a creative uh urge in me um so i i was sitting there going, well i don't know now that's actually something i'm looking for is that uh yes save your oh my like placebo effect of dependency but i literally feel like i cannot do work unless i have like the perfect strain to ignite my fire if that makes sense right and, well, and whatever rebellion. like people are gonna have their theories but like i i i truly believe this and just because i say it like you guys I'm, I'm reporting information that doesn't mean like the newscaster believes everything that they're sharing like just see me as a conduit take it or leave it i'm not i don't really care i still own my bongs I still smoke these vapes, even though we've had our horror stories with those too. So whatever, as long as you get have your you been, cannabinoids, have you, have you that's all dabbing? that matters. Have you been dabbing lately? Oh, I, I haven't dabbed in a while. In a while. And you don't, don't keep yourself with a, a, a regular dabbing device? I, ha I have a turpen and I cannot find it. And I'm very dependent. <laughs> I, I prefer my turpen because it doesn't get too hot. The yeah. dab itself, like, okay prone human my my family would literally be like do not give her a dab rig she does not need a fire she does not need a, a, a big thing of glass like please do not give her this this is a weapon you might as well just hand her a loaded gun at this point and have her smoke out of the barrel because that would be just as efficient and safe in my eyes so i haven't been able to cross over to like that side of dabbing yet my turp pen is perfect i just do my little pluck it's more than enough for me. I, like I said, I'm, I'm aging. I, my, my cannabinoid tolerance is very different now. Like what I can handle is so different, even just three years ago, what I was consuming online versus what I can consume and handle now. Are you eating any? Oh, hell any yeah. I, I just had a, a, a THCV edible before I, um, a gum, THCV heavy gummy before I did this talk because it's joyful and pleasant that's like the effect so i figured okay. okay i'll be i'll be joyful and pleasant <laughs> and how and how many milligrams is that that's four point like seven five thc and then like five point one thcv i'm pretty okay. it was like a weird it's a weird ratio I, I i it wasn't like five and five i remember it was like an odd ball number that that's on the bag i can go grab it like right there if you really want yeah no, that's cool. And and okay. what about uh, uh, are you doing any uh, micro uh, mushrooms or major? Yes, mushrooms? I actually. Um, <laughs> yes, I had some micro. I even microdosed this morning. Today is a dose day. Beautiful. So for those of you that are curious, this is what it looks like. You you could not tell. There's no way you could see me at the grocery store and think that girl's microdosing mushrooms. Yeah. And what's your dosing schedule? How do you dose it? Okay, so now. I I'm at the point because I've been doing this for about four years now that I feel the need. I like will take it. And if it's like three days before I have another dose, then it's three days. Maybe it's not the next day, but the following day, and there's just a day between, that's fine too. So I'm like more like a feeling it out at this point for my my thing. Some weeks I'm gonna need more than others, but like I right now my sweet spot is 0.2. Um, to like maybe 0.5, but even 0.5, I'm like feeling a little heavy. Like, a, you know, that like sluggish mushroom effect that you kind of feel. Mm -hmm. I still want to like be more like functional. That makes sense. So I'm like a 0.5, I'm 0.2, 2.5, depending on my dose day. Okay. So, and then right, recreationally, I, oof. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I, <laughs> this is a whole other bottle. I, I'm a baby at this myself. I, I, I just finished doing my, my own growth and, uh, own, I've created my own pills and measured them all out. And I'm about what, three months into this so far. And I've been changing and trying my different uh, schedules from uh, day on, day off, day on, day off to four days on, four days off to on, off, uh, uh, the two days on, two days off. So I'm kind of mixing things around. Yes. The, what, you know, what seems, but, but, I, I understand what you're saying about waiting to see what your body feels, because that's kind of what I'm doing even now is to deciding which one of these schedules I'm going to do. How's my yes. body? What's it telling me with all of this? 
but it has been fascinating the experience and i'm 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 thrilled that uh i started doing it i i thought it was going to have the effect that it is and it really has this whole tempering to me to the top and the bottom so that your middle is all much wider and and uh easier to get along with uh, yeah we turned into mushrooms <laughs> i'm digging it yeah who knew hey you know it's it's interesting because here it it it's all legal you know everything is legal as long as you're just doing it yourself and you're not uh, a company out doing things but uh in the united states now i mean you've got a bunch of different states now where everything is completely decriminalized i mean they can't make microdoses and sell them here um the, here the only thing they're selling in the in the netherlands is truffles right that, that those are the the the, the roots the 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 base there um which you know work but nowhere near like what <laughs> what they used to have here but now you've got what how many different products can you what? yeah mushrooms for oh. microdose things oh my gosh well i live <laughs> like 15 miles from oakland the other side of this bridge like i can see oakland on a clear day pretty much oh, okay. so um, and that, that's where it's decriminalized. And that's where a majority of the Bay Area residents do purchase their items and then cross over the bridge. How you how you were talking about crossing over to get your cannabis. This is how we get our mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got uh, isn't a uh, uh, hate. Yeah, well, that's right. Hate Street Mushrooms is right there. If you uh, watch watch the show. Yeah, he'll be here. Uh, you should run over and go introduce yourself. Uh, he can. Actually, he that's can, a great idea. He can, he can. He can send you in the right direction, so you won't have to make that trip back and forth. You can just stay at home and throw something into your uh, closet. Yes, uh, that's, uh, that's where I want to get next. Actually, I just needed to, you know, um, get uh, you know the whole family on board if I'm going to be growing something like that in our home. But I, I have a feeling that this is where where we're headed. We were very lucky. We had friends donate some stuff to us. Um, and we're playing around with different strains there and finding the ones that we love the most. And then we will probably grow based off of what it was more favorable to what we're going for. Cause they, they, they are so different. The effects are so different. Yeah. Everybody that's not familiar with this, it is very similar to cannabis where there are like energetic ones. And then there's like not downer, but like, you just feel like more relaxed. You'll probably sleep really heavily, take a good nap. Like there's definitely the yin and the yang, right? Yes. Yes, introspective, introspective ones and uh, ones that make you want to go out yes. and dance in the street. Uh, yes. <laughs> and there's tinctures now and they mix it with CBD now and they make chocolates now. I mean, I'm seeing all sorts of things. I just like capsules because I just love to cut to the chase and also like can make it at my my own, my own right. free will. Um, my husband Googled like the most perfect micro scale and it has like a little lip so we can like pour it perfectly into the capsules afterwards. So yep. We've got a good thing going on. <laughs> that, that's the way to do it, in my opinion. I didn't want to take a chance. And plus, I don't have products here. So, but you do have grow kits, and everybody's it's legal to grow kits. So, boom, I just grow mine and uh, throw them out, throw them in my little dehydrator, and grind them up, and psh, it's easy cheesy. <laughs> uh, uh, I have a question Do they make mushroom grinders that are like more thin? Because I feel like some of my cannabis grinders leave still pretty big chunks. I use a, a, a coffee grinder. There it is. There it is. And, all right. And of course, Tips from Captain Deuter. All right. <laughs> I use a coffee grinder, and mine is, and I only use it for that that one thing. I don't use it for anything else. Yeah, yeah separate grinders for separate things. Separate I have grinders. separate grinders for separate Oops. things too. Oops. I know people smoke mushrooms. Dude, I'm not there coffee. yet. I don't think this, I'll ever be. <laughs> this coffee this morning is really special. Um, <laughs> I don't know, you know, uh, there, I think there's so much that we have to to explore here um, and learn. And, you know, I'm uh, uh, I'm I'm enjoying every moment of it and I'm I'm trying different time frames and I'm I'm writing everything down. And yes. yeah, you know, that's uh, I think the key having fun and being happy. And that's again what this was all about. Talk about happy things. So tell me what's happy and wonderful that you have coming up in the future. What's happy and wonderful coming up in the future? Well, 
For those of you that follow American football, we do have the Super Bowl coming up uh, next month. It is a very big hubaloo <laughs> in America, mm -hmm. but I'm actually there to support cannabis and uh, a special topic about cannabis and athletes. And so I was invited to um, attend a really uh, big fundraiser with former athletes who are saying no to opiates and saying yes to cannabis. So I'll be sharing more information along with that. I'm so gracious. I get to be working alongside my bud base during this project. And um, she's going to be a big uh, support and sponsor for these events. Um, and also Arizona will be hosting the like first big cannabis based Super Bowl party. Just streets like blocks down from the, um, from the, uh, the game itself. So the stadium. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be really groundbreaking too. I'm very excited to see how the two worlds combine. Holy cow. Uh, how many people yeah. are they expecting there? Oh my God. It was, okay. I don't know if this is virtual, but they said 55, like they've probably, there's probably like 55,000 people has got to be virtual too, right? There's no way that many people could attend in one space. Oh, it's a Super Bowl. It's stages though. It has stages and stages. Maybe, I, I mean, maybe I'll have to look at the deck again because the deck is pretty extensive. But they, I mean, it's a very ambitious event. Redman is going to be there. He's launching his new latest product. So it's going to be like rap meets athletics meets cannabis meets. Boom. Yeah. Sounds fantastic. Yes, that should be happy. And also I'm going to attend the, uh, remember the last convention I talked to you about, like it's almost been six months since we spoke. So the next convention's coming around again. So I'll have a new exposure to, this is the big glass and CBD and mushroom expo. It's champs trade show. Mm -hmm. So I'll be attending that in February and then going from there to Arizona for Super Bowl. So more products to talk about in a couple months. We should do another episode. Dude, you are the hardest working lady in the business. I, again, I have so much respect or so much respect. You have to go, if you have not been to her website, go to her website. She's got a zillion different links going to uh, 10,000 different products, <laughs> events, things that she's doing and working on all the time. All of them are cool. All of them are interesting. And uh, I love your Instagram feed uh, as, as my, my primary for, for, you know, all of your, uh, your cool stuff. And, and thank you for coming in for the first show of the year. Oh my gosh. It's always a pleasure, Captain. Always a pleasure. All right, welcome back. How was that? I told you, man. The Mommy James the bomb. Make sure you follow her on all of her socials, and I'll put all of that information down in the bottom. In the meantime, I will see you next week with our next guest, Ian Bollinger from the Psilocybin Cup. Oh, ho, 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 ho. we're going to be tripping. <laughs> it's Captain Hooter. Far out, man.